Van Doren King, the Rebounder. Today we're going to be talking about Van Doren cane. Now, as always, I bought two types of this. I bought both the gouged and the gouged shaped and profiled. Let's first start out with the gouged shaped and profiled. The gouged shaped and profiled Van Doren cane I purchased from Charles Double Reed Company and it cost $15.75 per piece plus the cost of shipping. I know. I know, I was expecting a lot from this cane too, um, largely because if you're going to spend that much on one piece of cane, um, and most people make their own reads because it's more cost effective, I expected a lot. So let's dig into some of the details about this cane. It is ever so slightly wider than a Rieger 1A, about half a millimeter wider than the shape, especially at the tip um, and along the blade. The tube comes in anywhere between 30.5 to 30.75 millimeters. It varies ever so slightly from piece to piece. The gouge comes in at 1.4. Now I think Van Doren is compensating for the fact that they know their cane is extremely hard. Um, by having a piece of cane that has a slightly thicker gouge, that means that the profile will need to take off more or that as you scrape, you will end up taking off more of that cane that is closer to the bark. That cane that is closest to the bark is harder than the softer inside of the cane. So by leaving it a little bit thicker, that means that your profile will end up taking off a little bit more and that then you will soften the reed just ever so slightly. The profile on these reeds um, for a reed that came in at about 55 millimeters in length came in with a tip that was at 42, a heart that was between 68 and 70, and the back of the reed was at about 105. So you know that these are dimensions that overall I basically like. The heart is thick enough that it is going to have that stability to it, um, but if you go too much shorter, it immediately drops off. So 55 is about as short of a reed as I would wanna go, but because the cane is so hard, I would scrape this down substantially. The overall profile on the rails is so thick. Um, I would say that if you are buying the gouge shaped and profiled, you can um, guarantee that you're going to need a diamond file that's, uh, I like to use the triangle shape, so that as you break the reed in, you can start to take those rails down because they are thick. Okay, let's dig into the gouged cane. The gouged cane runs $6.70 per piece plus the cost of shipping. Now this is less than the gouge shaped and profiled. It's about uh, just over a third of the gouge shaped and profiled cost, but it is more than most of the cane that is on the market. Now, by the time I dig into the gouge cane, you guys know that I start to solidify some of my opinions on the cane. And I've already hinted at the fact that this cane is hard when I discuss the gouge. So let's talk a little bit about my experiences that I had when I made these reads. Some of the reads that I had ended up smiling. This means that one side of the cane was harder than the other side of the cane after I did the fold over. Um, as always, I checked to see if this had to do with a crack um, that was on one side that was not on the other, which can sometimes uh, create a smiling tip opening, and it was not. Um, I do have to say that Van Doren cane is by far the most brittle and most prone to cracking cane that I have ever worked with. I mean, it cracked more than the Madeir. And even the crosshatch, putting on the first wire prior to forming, um, binding extra tight with uh, the cotton thread, all of these things did not stop some of the cane from just cracking straight into the tip. And it was always right down the center. Um, I never score down the center, but as I would go into forming, it would just crack straight down the center and it was on both sides and then I would still end up re with reeds that were smiling. And this smile is not a good thing in this case. Now you guys know I love a good hard piece of cane, but it did make me wonder if this cane was actually too hard because it was cracking. Um, I formed them into reeds, I broke them in, and I played them in, but some of the reeds, even afterwards, and they were great reeds, um, they had a tendency to leak. Now, I like to test the seal of a reed by um, putting the reed between my pointer finger and my middle finger, and then putting my thumb along the base of the tube, 
and then putting the reed in my mouth and sucking and pulling the reed out and it should make a popping noise and then the tip should be the last to open and that's the pop as it um, as the seal finally breaks and these reeds had a tendency to seal but yet still when I was playing leak with a slight hissing sound Another way I know that this is really hard cane is my scraping down and playing system. Now what I like to do as I'm breaking in a reed is play on it and then scrape it down as it becomes resistant and then play on it and then scrape it down. And every time I scrape it down, I like to scrape it down just to that point where it starts to go ever so slightly flat and is a little bit unstable and then play on it. Now usually as I start playing on it, it will restabilize and pitch. And that usually takes about 30 minutes for it to rebound of just playing on it after it's unstable and then it is stable and it has flexibility and it has tone color. Now, usually that whole process is gonna take 30 minutes of playing. The Van Doren cane is so hard that the reeds were resistant, so I would scrape them to the point of flexibility and I would play on them for five minutes. Five minutes and it had restabilized in pitch and it was also not flexible anymore and it was resistant and needed to be scraped again. Okay, let's talk about some of my suggestions for Van Doren Kane. Now, for me, I like a reed that is a little bit more flexible, a little bit less resistant, um, and also not quite as hard because sometimes when I'm going to gigs, I will end up with days of um, six hours of playing. Um, whether this is six hours of rehearsal, that's been known to happen, or um, maybe I have my own practicing that I need to do and then also I have a rehearsal later that day. So I want a read that is going to give me the flexibility for a lot of dynamic contrast but also not overly tire my muscles out. Um, so when I was thinking about this, I was like, where would this cane be most applicable? And I think for students that have instruments that are extremely flexible in pitch. Um, these reeds, when I would first clip the tip, were very loud, um, but they always retained a center of tone color and a center of pitch. So if you have an instrument that's a little bit wonky, maybe on one or two notes you're trying to play them and they, um, they just don't have a center of where you blow them that they just sit in the right place with the intonation, this could be the answer to your problems. Other suggestions that I have for Van Doren Kane. I would not hand gouge. This cane is so hard and hand gouging can make a soft piece of cane even harder. I would always form using a cross hatch and additional scoring and instead of just doing scoring on um, three sides on either side of the center, I would actually do probably about four or five cuts closer together to try to avoid cracking down the center even more. I would also always form with the first wire on so that if it does crack, that first wire has the potential to stop the reed from cracking into the blades. Just to be safe to make sure that it's not leaking, I would also sand the base of the tube after forming in order to create a really good solid hold at the base of the tube. And finally, I would scrape this reed light probably lighter than some of the other softer types of cane um, because it can stand up to a good scraping. I mean, you can take this down and it always had a center of tone and also a center of pitch. So for this one, I would scrape as light as I dare. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you want to make sure that you are up to the minute on all of the happenings from my read desk, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter. I do post faster updates there than the videos that you see here so you can get some uh, first impressions as they happen if you follow me on social media. If you want to make sure that you never miss a video on my channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye! A while back in a haul, I noted that I purchased a Legere synthetic reed, meaning a plastic reed. I know, I know. And because so many of you were shocked, um, you have asked for a review of what I think about it. So let's get into some of the facts about how it's made and how much Can you hear them? And that's only the brass. And that's not even the full brass. They're coming. They're coming back. Marching band is about ready to start. 
walk on through the pain. Do, 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 do. And then brass love the cadence jazz hands. Yeah, real.